Good evening, peeps. My name is Scripps, and welcome to another speed paint, I should say. And the reason that I'm kind of hesitant about that answer is because it's actually the first video that I'm kind of worried about making in a very long time. I've actually gotten a lot more confident in the way that I do videos, and especially the ways that I just sit here and talk and do commentary over my drawings. I've kind of gotten used to that at that point, or at this point, like my normally nervous state has kind of disappeared from that. But today, I am a little nervous, but that's actually not because of my commentary, it is because my abilities in drawing. Because in case you couldn't see, or in case you couldn't tell from the title, then this is the beginning of a new kind of challenge video that I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to take a left hook at. Because, or well, we'll see how well this will do when it actually gets up at some point. But the idea is that I'm not just gonna do a regular old speed paint, I'm not gonna do some good old fan art like I mostly do most of the time, but I'm actually gonna be doing a drawing challenge. And this challenge is basically, well, yeah, it's a challenge, it's a challenge, it's a fight, it's a fight fist off, I, I don't know what you'd call it. But basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go head to head with artists of different levels. And let's just say that all of those levels, every single one of them, is far beyond me. Um, and the reason that I'm actually doing this in the first place is because I want to live in discomfort. <laughs> that, that sounds very negative, but I mean it in actually a good way. I want to be in a discom discomforting space in, in order to improve, because the only way you can improve is to step out of your comfort zone. But here's the thing, I've been trying to like make myself sort of uh, uncomfortable with the way that I work and do drawings, I want to challenge myself with different poses, yada yada yada, every single artist who wants to improve does that. They take a little, little skinny dip, or not a skinny dip, they take a little, a little naked toe and put it out in the, in the calm waters of the uncomforting. But uh, that's not what I'm gonna do today. I'm gonna freaking, I'm gonna get naked, I'm gonna skinny dip, I'm gonna freaking jump in the ocean of uncomforting because, uh, <laughs> well, I don't know, I guess it's just because I've never been in front of such a daunting task before and it's gonna be interesting seeing how I perform and actually, I don't know, I might be surprised by my abilities, <laughs> both in a bad and in a good way. Maybe I'm better than I think I am or maybe I'm much, much worse than I think I am. Or maybe that doesn't say a lot about how bad I am, more about how amazing these different artists are. But I'm gonna call this series level 1 to level 100 artists or something like that. Like a nice little hook for all the subscribers and the viewers that I'm so desperate for. <laughs> but however, this being a series, or at least I want it to be something along those lines, then that also means that I'm gonna start in a chronological order and I'm gonna go up from uh, the easiest to replicate, because that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna try Try to imitate their art style. I'm gonna start with the easiest and then I'm just gonna keep adding difficulty on top of that. And it's gonna be a drastic development, trust me. It's not just gonna be slightly harder, slightly harder than that. No, it's gonna be, it's gonna be like a culture shock for every video I'm gonna do. But yes, that does mean that in this video I'm not gonna be extremely far out of my comfort zone. I wouldn't say I'm completely in my comfort zone, but I'm kinda in my comfort zone because I'm gonna be replicating the, the art style of a person that I look up to very much and a person who I bet has inspired my art style in some way. <laughs> Even if it's just unconsciously, I bet I've consumed some of her content and it's kinda made its way into my own. But it's Timmy Chang, that's right, co-creator of Undertale, of Escaped Chasm, Ch Chasm, the, the game that just came out not very long ago and I also played it on the channel. You can go watch that by the way if you want to, it's a very, it's a very sweet little game. And then she of course also worked on Deltarune, which I also love and I've also done several speed paints of. In general, I just love her character design, but I'm not gonna be going so far as to call it going in the Undertale direction. I will just be replicating Temi's style. And if she's not actually doing any work for Toby and she's not like working on a completely different like project, then her natural art style actually seems to be going back towards these anthropomorphic humans. I wouldn't I wouldn't call her a furry. I mean I mean she does make some furry characters, but I, I would not call her a furry. I mean, can we just go back to the good old days where we didn't call anything that was like an animal furry? Can we just go back to calling it anthropomorphic? I find that much more um not sucky. 
Oh, but anyways, okay, so the thing that's difficult with me about Timmy's art style is actually not the way that she designs her characters a lot of the time. Uh, she does a lot of, uh, well, she does something that I've seen a lot of people do, and that's, well, she makes anthropomorphic characters. And not only that, but she also makes kind of demon-focused characters. And basically just different merges between humans and something supernatural because humans in themselves can be kind of boring, let's be honest, we've done. I, I, I bet when as soon as you get out of art school, you've done so many figure drawings, you, you don't want to draw anything like that anymore. So I don't know if that's what happened to Tammy, who knows, it might be. But uh, she definitely kind of goes away from a bunch of different human features a lot. One of those being the ears. I've actually only seen like ears on two of her characters. And it's weird because one of the characters that she has just normal human ears on is actually a character that like uh, shows up a lot on her DeviantArt and different stuff. And I also think that she's going to be the main character of the new game she's making. And I believe she's called Yoki. She's kind of got these weird bat ears and also human ears. But I don't know, they might be kind of like antennae with eyes on them. That would make a bit more sense, I guess. But this decision to kind of stray away from human ears and give them kind of like animal ears, it, it's, you know, it's a trend that I see a lot on DeviantArt and different art websites, and I don't get why people hate it at all. I mean, like, it's very clever, actually, because if you think about it, then animal ears can actually help show off emotion. Uh, one of the ways that we perceive, like, emotion through, like, regular animals we see in everyday lives is actually by the position of their ears, especially, like, dog ears or cat ears, whereas human ears, they don't really, uh, really move. It's almost a skill if you can make them move. So, yeah, it, I don't know. It's kind of like the way we make our eyes very big in, in, like, anime art styles or just regular cartoon art styles. We make the eyes bigger so it's easier to tell the emotion. And here, those kind of, like, anthropomorphic animal ears can really help out as well, especially, like, seeing uh, a person's emotions from afar or even, like, from the back. You'd be able to see they have kind of, like, their ears back. You'd be able to see they're, they're scared. It's a good way to show emotion. So basically, um, smart, smart decision, Temmie. And if you do any drawings kind of like this and you also use anthropomorphic animal ears, don't let anyone call you a furry. Don't let anyone talk down to you. Just exp <laughs> tell them what I just told you. It's a smart design decision and no one should talk down to you for it. But anyway, enough ranting about ears. The main point that I actually wanted to get to was that the one thing that I found very hard to replicate about Temmie's style, but that I really freaking love about her style, is her amazing use of color. She has a fantastic use of color. Uh, and she also has some very delicate, fine, uh, like, line work. And while I couldn't replicate this, I couldn't replicate the, the, the extremely fine line work the way that she did. Um, or actually, maybe she she kind of differentiates between doing very fine line work or doing low, no line work at all. And I think that's more what I was aiming towards in this in this drawing in particular. Uh, because I kind of, like, drew the, the line art in the same color that the main thing was going to be colored as. So it kind of ended up looking like uh, there was no line art, which I I like a lot. I actually like the way she did that. Uh, and it, how can I explain it? It feels very laid back, her style. And that's actually something that I decided to not only like try to make it look like it was made uh, with little effort, but I actually wanted to try it out. Uh, I actually made a drawing before, uh, or I made two drawings for this video because I didn't like the first one. I felt very tense about it, and us, for some reason that just felt wrong, feeling very tense and nervous and being so like precise doing a, a drawing in Temi style. So I decided to just go much more laid back, just a much more neutral position and not think about, not stress about it too much, and just have fun with coloring and just, you know, use different colors, just play around with the character and the way it looks, and it turned out really well. Like, I can even put up my other drawing that I did for comparison, and I much prefer the way that this character ended up looking. Uh, they seem a lot more innocent and childish, and I mean, a lot more emotion shows through, so I'm happy that I decided to make another one. It wasn't actually just because I wanted to make another one, it was kind of a happy coincidence, because, well, my, <laughs> my I forgot to record my drawing tablet while I was drawing the first one, so I don't even have the footage for it. But I'm happy that I just, uh, I was just like, oh, you know, I don't, I don't care, I didn't really like this drawing anyway, so I'll draw a new one. But I like the way that the coloring worked out in this one, especially. The coloring, it's so it's so high in hue and saturation, I like the color palette. Uh, and it does feel like a character, even though it looks maybe a little boring, doesn't have, have that many, she doesn't have that many defining features about her. Uh, and Temi does like to have like a few things that make a character quirky compared to others, but she still feels like someone who would fit in in the Timmy Chang universe. 
Not from a technical strength perspective, are you kidding me? I mean, there, I, still, I still spy a lot of issues with this, like, like the anatomy is pretty bad, the way I, I didn't even draw hands, so that was pretty bad. And I don't know, like, I, I practice anatomy, but I think anatomy is just a thing that takes a long, long time to get. Uh, and Temmie Chang is a full-time animator, so you know, I'll, I'll cut my losses, I'll say, you know what Temmie, you completely win on the technical skill level, but I do feel like I got the important parts, which was coloring, with a little bit of a help from a filter, but I, I like the coloring, and it's something that I'll definitely, I, I, you know, if, when I get when I get to the coloring part, when I whenever I get to actually sit down and learn about coloring, then I'm definitely gonna take inspiration from you, Temmy, because I really like um, I really like your art style and the way your colors are so saturated. It fits very much uh, my vision of how I want to do drawing. So that, I guess that's something I learned for the episode. Yay! Um, by the way, I really hope that Temmy isn't. Uh, or wouldn't be offended by the fact that she's the first on this list, meaning that she's the quote-unquote easiest to replicate. Uh, it's th That's not meant as a bad thing at all. Trust me, Temi is a freaking extremely good artist, and like she's got tier compared to me, but it's just the freaking levels that this challenge is gonna go... Uh, it's it's gonna it's gonna go uphill so bad or the, the uphill or downhill I don't really know what to say but it's just uh, the level is gonna increase so much I mean we're gonna be talking about triple A like concept artists those are the kind of people that I'm gonna be comparing myself to it's um, yeah it's that bad by the way it's mostly concept artists that I'm gonna be working with on in this challenge maybe I'll do some other artists at this point but the reason that I also picked uh, Timmy specifically is because she technically is a concept artist. But anyways, I think that was enough for this video. I'm kind of happy with the way that the result turned out, especially on the second drawing. I wasn't really happy with the way I did the first drawing, and, I, and when I do this challenge, I want to be proud of myself. At least, like, at least on the first drawing that I do. <laughs> on the first, like, challenge that I do, I want to end up with something that, you know, I'm kind of proud of. Because, it, once again, it's just gonna get harder and harder. Uh, but, I, I, you know, when I get higher and higher up on the level, it's gonna be easier forgiving myself for not living up to their standard, because it's, it, it's gonna be bad. But you're gonna have to wait till the next episode to see what kind of concept artist I'll be challenging next. But anyways, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.